He left his table and he followed Jesus. Now, don't you think the other guys were going, now I can see us, but him, him, tax collectors, were they, were they well liked within the community? Were they held in high esteem? Zealots wanted to kill them because they viewed them as traitors, okay? Because they were working for the Roman government. And yet, not only does Jesus invite one, but then he goes to his house, and all of them come. And Jesus doesn't say, listen guys, you've got to clean yourself up before I come into your house. He doesn't say that, right? Show me in here where he gives any type of instruction of what must be done before I come and eat with you. Nothing, right? That's what we're supposed to be like. That's why we're supposed to be salt and light. We're not here to judge. We're not here to hold things over other people. But we're here to be like Jesus. And that is to offer salvation to all those that we need. Amen. Salt and light. Now it happened as Jesus sat at the table in the house that behold... Many tax collectors, oh, in this other word, they're worse than tax collectors. Who are they? Sinners. Many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to his disciples, now why did they say this to Jesus? Why did they have to say it? Is it because Jesus was sitting here and all these Pharisees were so far away from the table that they just couldn't get a conversation with him? Maybe There's a reason Jesus why it mentions this. Okay? Jesus would have set him straight. They tried to deal with Jesus one on one, and how well did it work out for them? Every single time, it never worked out with them, the way they wanted it, right? Every time they confronted him, he stopped them, and then he showed them the truth, and he didn't want to accept it. So they realized they weren't getting anywhere with him, so what's the next best area to go to? Yeah, because see, if he can, if if they can cause dissension among that rank, or if they can plant that seed of doubt, that will work just as well as confronting the master one on one. Right? Whose tactic is that? The it's the devil's tactic. Okay, so when the Pharisees saw it, this is verse 11, they said to the disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? And when Jesus heard that, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Then he tells them again, but go and learn what this means. I desire what? I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but I came to call sinners repentance. Amen. That, brothers and sisters, is the good news. What's that right? Amen. Now you know why the Pharisees just had a hard time with Jesus. But listen, when Jesus said this to him, to them, did he do it out of anger? No. Did he do it to make them look bad? No. Or did he do it because he really cared for them and he wanted to save their souls? Amen. Sometimes you got to cut and hurt to bring somebody to the foot of where they're able to actually listen and hear. Right? Right? It wouldn't have cut if they weren't right. That's true. the reason it cut. Very true. Very true. All right, so turn now to Matthew 11. 28 through 30. This is the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Jesus is again talking to the people. He's also talking to his disciples. And he's also talking to the scribes and the Pharisees. And he says, Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Verse 29. And are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin and not. Yeah. Yeah, where are you at? Hold on, let me make sure I'm right. Yeah, Matthew 11, 28 through 30. That's 10. Sorry, that's, this is the one I want. This is the one I want. No. 
11, 11, 28 to 30. This is the one. This is the gospel. Come to me, all you who what? Labor. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am what? And lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now listen, Jesus is talking to a culture that was an agrarian culture, right? They knew what labor meant. If you wanted to eat, then you had to plow the field and work. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> And it wasn't like taking the rototiller out there, putting gas in it, standing behind it, and thinking, man, this is so hard. Okay? Everything done by hand, and if it wasn't done by hand, then you used a beast of earth. Okay? Which is why they had the yoke. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. Meaning that he would be yoked with you. And he would be by your side. And if you couldn't carry it, he would carry it for you. That's the Savior that we serve. That is the love that God has for each of us. He knows. He knows what it is to be tired. He knows what it is to labor. And He knows what it is to be refreshed. Now listen. When Jesus was tired, who did He turn to? We turn to Jesus. Who does He turn to? And did His Father ever let Him down? Ever? Even on the cross, did the Father let the Son down? No. Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But where was God at? Right there, in that cloud, with his Son. Now listen, if it broke the heart of your Savior, don't you think it broke the heart of God the Father? For what? For me. And for you, I can see for you, but I know me. That kind of love, I want to know that kind of God. I want to be with that kind of God. Okay, this is where we're close. Let's look at one more text. Let's go to Matthew 20, verses 17 through 19. Matthew 20. Life and ministry of Jesus. Matthew 20, verses 17 through 19. Now Jesus, going up to Jerusalem, took the twelve disciples aside on the road and said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and to the scribes, and they will condemn him to death. Verse 19. And deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to what? <coughs> and the third day he will rise again. Do you think his disciples just didn't hear that, that part? It says, he took them to the side, and he spoke to them, and he said plainly, we're going to Jerusalem, and this is what's going to happen. I will be betrayed, and I'll be handed over to the Gentiles, and they will scourge me, and they will crucify me. You think they just didn't know what that meant? They knew. They knew. That's why they didn't want to hear it. And believe me, when he said that to them, I can guarantee you things were quiet for a long period of time. Because they had to think on these things. Surely that couldn't happen to him. And they wanted it not to happen so bad that they believed that it wouldn't happen. Right? Yes. Surely that could never happen to him. Now listen. When he took the twelve and told him that, wasn't one of those twelve Judas? Yeah. Judas. What was Judas's motive for betraying Christ? Did he really want the thirty pieces of silver? Call him out. Call him out. Call him out. Right. Judas was a politician, right? Mm -hmm. He was going to force Jesus's hands because, see, in Judas's eyes. Jesus needed him. What Jesus was trying to get to Judas, through to Judas, was, you need me. 
Judas was going, no, you need me. And Judas was going to force his hand. 30 pieces of silver. What did Judas do with those 30 pieces of silver before he went and hanged himself? It wasn't about the money. Judas was a politician. And this is where I'm going to end this at. We are going through an election cycle. I hate these cycles. I hate watching the television commercials. I hate listening to these guys on TV. Do not put your trust in politicians because they are all the same. The kingdom that we want to build is not here on this earth. The kingdom that we want to build is in heaven. We look for a country whose builder and maker is God. Marty, have your hand up. I just want to say that we are blessed that we have the process, though. Oh, I am so glad that we have process. But don't put all your faith. And don't put all your focus on even that process. And, and Because again, our kingdom and our king and our leader isn't here on this earth. Amen. But he is has already built a place for us. He's promised to come back for us. So this world is not our home. Right? But we are called to live in this world and we are called to be salt and light. So you do as your conscience dictates, but do it according to Jesus' teachings. Salt and light. Closing in this morning is hymn number 190.